Hello, my friends. It's good to be with you today. It's time for Sunday School. This is for Sunday, October the 31st, Halloween. Can you believe it? In the year 2021. And we're going to talk today about the greatest commandment. And, um, well, we'll just, we'll just get right into it. You know, when you want to do something, all things in life require a foundation. And that's the first thing that we need to do first. Whether it's um, building a building or if we're doing some work. And we just have to build on a foundation before we can go further. I think about when I was learning to be a math teacher. And I was learning about math, of course. But then I started to learn about the best ways to teach people. To teach students and I built on that as I went to college and then really over the years of being a math teacher and then a principal and then a math teacher again um, I learned more and more things so I didn't stop learning it was just something that I kept building on and building on and building on much like when you're building a building or a swimming pool or just blocks when you're playing with your brothers and sisters so let's think about the alphabet. We're going to use the alphabet as something we're going to build on. When you learn to read, and some of you know how to read, and some of you might not yet, but when you learn how to read, you learn a foundation for your words. Can you think of what that foundation is? That's right. It's the alphabet. And so we need letters to communicate in our language just as we need rules or guidelines to do anything. So what's the most important foundational rule that we have? Well, we're reminded several times in the Bible of the true greatest commandment. And that greatest commandment is to love God with all of who we are. Love him with our heart and our soul and our mind and also to love others as ourselves. So the Old Testament leaders always questioned Jesus about the law and they were focused on the law and we've heard stories together about times they tried to trick Jesus but they also wanted to know what rules were the most important to follow and Jesus brings everything back to that idea of a foundation the most important thing reminding us that first and foremost in our in our lives should be loving God and we also have the blessing of knowing that God loved us first and always will. So I'm going to get down here to my verse and I'm going to share this story with you. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about it. This is Mark 12 verses 28 through 34. I'm trying to do this without my glasses for the glare in the video. We'll see if I can read these words without them. Again, this is Mark 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which one is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying God, that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love, him, love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. So there's a couple of things going on in there. Um, but my favorite part is when he told the man who had answered him well, about the greatest commandments he said you are not far from the kingdom of God and that meant that that man had the good foundation that he knew he should love God and he knew he should love other people 
So that's a really good part of that story. I also love the part where it says no one dared ask him any more questions because they finally realized the authority under which Jesus was speaking, that he was speaking on God's behalf. So let's go back to this idea of foundation. You know the alphabet, and some of you are learning to read, and some of you read very well. Well, I'm sure you learned the alphabet song when you were little. We'll see if my voice will hold out this morning. It's a little raspy, but let's sing it together. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Well, that was kind of fun. <clears throat> and I am a little raspy. <clears throat> but we got through it okay. Well, I'm glad that you know those letters or are learning those letters. So why is the alphabet important? Well, it's because it's the foundation for our English language. Well, for any language. You have to have letters to make sounds, and then we put those letters and sounds together and make words. And when we put words together, we can make sentences, and then we can communicate our ideas. We can read a whole book, and we can write things for each other. <clears throat> and we can read the most important book, and that's God's Word, the Bible. But we have to start with the alphabet. We have to have that as our foundation before we can do all of those other things, before we can do anything else with language. And there are lots of things in our lives that require some sort of first step foundation. You have to put a foundation down underneath a house with blocks and with cement. If you're making a pizza, you have to have a foundation of the dough before you put all the toppings on it. And what about our lives as Christians? Well, that foundation, that first and most important commandment that I read to you in that, in that passage is what we should remember before we do anything else. <clears throat> and it's described so often in the Bible. I'm going to read this part to you again. The people asked him, actually wanted to trick him. And they had hundreds of rules and commandments tied um, to their lives that they had devised to make themselves look good. You know, those were the Pharisees. However, Jesus' response that I read to you earlier was to quote the Old Testament. Those commandments were in the Old Testament, saying the most important thing we can do is to love God with all of who we are. And the second is to love our neighbor. Love God. And love one another. You know, we talk about that a lot. It's not complicated. Um, Jesus said all of the laws could be summed up in those two commandments. And he's right. The most essential piece of law is love. The most important part of the law is love. Well, it reminds me of another little letter trick. Have you ever seen this word? If you can't read it, it says joy. <clears throat> and it helps me to remember the most important commandments. We have true joy when we do what Christ says. You know, it's interesting. I had a conversation with a very good friend of mine this week. And we were talking about times when we're sad. Maybe when we've lost a loved one or somebody hurts our feelings. Maybe a pet has died. Um, maybe mom's mad at us because we made a mistake. There's lots of things about this world and this life that can make us sad or angry or lonely. But when you have joy in your heart because of who Jesus is in you, then that changes everything. That joy that's in your heart, even though you're sad, even though you're angry, even though you're not happy, joy 
is in your heart because of who Jesus is. So this little word, joy, I use to remind me of those commandments. We have true joy when we do what Christ says. We should put Jesus before all other things. That's the J in joy. Then, <clears throat> well, we put Jesus first, loving him with all of who we are and seeking to serve him in everything that we do. We do everything for him. Then we put others next. So love God and love your neighbor. Jesus, others. Finally, we care for ourselves, but we put yourself, but put yourself last. You do have to care for yourself. It's important. This is how we can have joy. Putting Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. Still taking care of yourself. This is how we can have joy. Now, it's not always easy. Sometimes we might not want to put God or Jesus first. We might not even want to love those people around us because they're driving us crazy or they're not our favorite people or they're not even very nice. But God can help us to do that. And it's hard to take care of ourselves sometimes. I'm trying to do a better job of that. I'm drinking more water and less diet Pepsi. Let me tell you, that's tough. But it's important. You know, God wants him to wants us to love him because he knows that he that it will bless our lives. God wants us to love him because he knows that it will bless our lives and that's absolutely true. And God loves us so much. He loved us before <clears throat> sorry, before we were even born. And he will always love us no matter what we do. He wants what's best for us and promises to provide for us. His word says that, that he will provide for us. What more could we do as a thank you to him than to love him with our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength? Love God and love one another. Those are good things today. You know, I think I'm going to put this sign up. I have joy in my heart all the time. But this is a great reminder for me to put Jesus first, others next, and myself last. And I'll always have joy, no matter what my emotions say or do. Well, let's pray and thank God for his help and his love. And let's ask him for help in loving others. Dear God, thank you for your firm foundation, for your perfect commandments that tell us to love you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. And the next greatest commandment is to love others as ourselves. We love your word. It's got such great direction in it and we're so thankful for your voice in our hearts. God, sometimes it's hard to love other people, and sometimes it's hard to put you first. And we're just going to ask today that you help us do that. Help me do that. Help all of our little ones do that. Help all of our big ones do that. To love you first, and then to love others, and then to take care of ourselves. We are so grateful for who you are in us, Lord God, and for all that you've done and all that you are. We are just in awe of it. We thank you for the beauty of this fall season and the leaves on the trees. It is a beautiful thing to watch. Those turn color and then fall as winter comes. Father, we're grateful to you, grateful for each other, grateful for the sacrifice you made when you sent Jesus to die on a cross for our sins. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your commandments. But thank you most of all for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, it's always so good to be with you. I miss you. I hope you come to church sometime soon. I love you so much. And I will see you the next time.
拜。